name is Arturo Marquez and I work for uh, Tell Vitali. I'm not a strap yeah, but I support these guys because uh, uh, that family, that's my family. The both the same. My name is Surinder Kaur and I work for Marion Markey, Turn Down Service, Turn Down PM Lady. What kind of work do you do? Turn Down. Turn Down Service. Yes. How long have you been on strike? 56 days. <laughs> yes. 56 days. Maria looking for us. He testing us. How we strong, but we are very strong. One day longer, union getting stronger. Yeah. You're getting stronger? Yes, we are very strong. We are very strong. What are your demands? What are the issues for you? Why you've been out, why are you striking? We need a we need a health care, we need job security, we need uh, increased wages, wages increase, and our green program fighting with the Marriott. The, we don't like the green program because green program injured for the ladies, uh, hurting for the ladies. What is the green program? The green program is like that. The, if the guest reservation, if the Marriott asking, uh, if you no need service three days, they give the point. Then the three days, if they no service, the housekeeper have to stay home. Then three days after, even the housekeeper clean the room, how the room is very dirty. So 30 minutes, how can she clean the, the room? Room was very, very dirty. That's why the, the, we are fighting for our, uh, um, uh, the green program. We don't need the green program. And a lot of, uh, are there injuries because of the work? Why don't you talk about what it's like being a room cleaner? Yeah, the, a lot of injury. The, you know, the ladies, they are working like 30 year, 20 year, 15 year. They are long time to work here. So it's, it's getting old. People getting old. It's not young. So very, very hard to, you know, the, the, the taking time when the room clean. They need safety. We need safety. Is this your first strike? Yes. Then I enjoy that this strike. <laughs> So you're learning about solidarity. Yes, we're learning how the local too. But I thanks full for the local too and the international, international local, the local too. They helping us a lot. They fight for us, and I really, really appreciate for the local too. The all the management, all the representative, and I, I very appreciate for that. Larry Lucarumba. What kind of work do you do? Do you work at the Marriott? Yeah, I work here in this building, San Francisco Marriott Marquis, as a housekeeper for six and a half years. This is a long strike. Have you ever been on a strike before? Oh, no. This is my first time here in America. What have you learned in this strike? I mean, because going out on strike is a big issue, a big concern, you know, for workers. Survival, you know, and that kind of uh, thing. It's really hard to be on strike, but... Um, I, uh, I'm doing this uh, because uh, I want to have a fair wages and it, it is for my kids, uh, the health benefits for my kids uh, because uh, we need it and uh, I'm just fighting for what is right. This is a rich corporation, Yeah. they're making a lot of money. <laughs> I know. Uh, they are very rich and uh, we are the one who make them rich. So I think uh, it is just fair for them to share uh, those uh, money that they were uh, gaining from us. Why are they taking such a hard line? I mean, you're not asking for a million dollars. You're yeah, asking. I know. Uh, if they can raise the wage, uh, the bonus or the wage of their CEO in, into a, like a million dollar, why they cannot give us even a dollar? I think uh, we deserve it because uh, we make them rich. And are there problems, uh, health and safety problems for room cleaners? Yeah, uh, we do because uh, they have this green choice program where. Uh, it's really hard for us because uh, they don't want the guests to have to clean their room for three days, and it's really you can cut down on room cleaners yeah, that way. It's it's not only that it gives us uh, much pain in our body, in our shoulder, but also it cuts our hours. Um, 
those uh, housekeepers don't have schedule because of that. Instead of having a five days, we only have like three days, four days. You want to cut your health care benefits? Yeah, for sure, yeah. And they want us to pay the difference because they said that the health benefits is uh, getting high and uh, they don't want to pay to pay us that health benefit and we deserve to have the health insurance that we have. So what have you learned about being on strike? What have you learned about being on strike? Uh, I learned to be strong and uh, being on strike gives me uh, the dignity and the respect that I deserve. That's, uh, and I learned that uh, we need to be strong. We need to fight for what is right. That's why even though I'm the only one standing here, I still fight for what is right. It's a war between the big company and we are not that, I mean, we're only small people, I know, but it, the, people that, uh, are, the people that are united, they cannot be defeated. As long as we are here, strong and united, we can battle uh, even the big bosses. Good, thank you. We're not asking for millions or thousands or hundreds. We're only asking like dollar in our wages or uh, a dollar that we deserve that we can live and uh, meet the ends that uh, we deserve uh, to have a decent life here in the city because we don't need to, to work double job uh, to have enough uh, to have enough uh, space to live. I mean, I work two job. I'm a single mom of three kids. How do you survive with single mom and three kids? I work two jobs. After after in Marriott, uh, I used to work in the laundromat before. But now, since I was evicted in the apartment because I cannot pay the rent anymore because they want me to pay high, uh, they renovated the apartment and they want me to to pay a thousand dollar more. So I live with my sister now, and uh, uh, I occupy one of her room, the four of us because uh, I cannot pay the rent anymore, so I'm doing now the DoorDash just to, just to earn some uh, money, extra money for us to survive because I need food, I need everything for my kids and I'm the only one, I'm the only one uh, who's working and... Uh, well, I it seems like there's lots of construction for millionaires, million dollar condos, does that bother you? Yeah. Uh, the money is going for the, for the rich yeah. to build condos, there's yeah. no working class house? Yeah, because uh, actually, like what they're doing, the green choice. They said that it's for the environment, but actually it's not for the environment. It's it's another kind of green. It's the green money. That means uh, it's uh, more money on their pocket. Because uh, actually the green choice program doesn't help, uh, help the environment because the guests are still asking for a lot of towels. The guests are still, uh, we're still doing a lot of, uh, using a lot of chemicals. So how come it, it becomes uh, uh, environmental friendly? They just want to, to cut the hours so that they will have some more profit. And that means they don't care about the people who's working for them. Uh, they only they only concern about their profits to make them more richer. The, uh, they cannot uh, understand what we feel here because they are rich. They have, they have a big house. They have... A, they have a beautiful houses, their family has their own cars. They don't need to, to they don't need to transport from here to there because they have drivers or they have they have everything and we don't have. We're just we're not asking too much. We're just asking what we deserve so that we can also live uh, with my family and have time for them. Uh, my name is Brian Wheatley, and a uh, longtime teacher. These are the families that I've taught my whole career. As a union president, these are the, the groups that I've worked with. One job absolutely should be enough. And teachers are having a rough time too, with charters and privatization. Well, you know, there's a lot, lot going on around public education. It's one of the reasons why I ran uh, and was successful becoming a trustee. But a huge part of it are the families that we serve, they need to be able to live because they're leaving the Santa Clara Valley because they can't afford to stay. 
what do you think about the issue of working people not having a place to stay? Uh, they need the workers, yet they can't survive. We absolutely, and this is the whole idea of a safe place to work and being able to not have to work two and three jobs. Again, I go back to being a teacher for 25 years. How can you be there for your kid to help with homework? How can you come to back to school night if you're working three jobs? And, uh, what is happening with your students? Are they being, they're being forced to leave or what, what's going on? Well, there's an economic issue in the Bay Area that families can't afford to stay, so they're moving other places and it's, it's affecting teachers as well. But ultimately, if we don't have kids to teach, it's, it, the whole system what, breaks down. And you ran for trustee. What were your issues that you raised in your campaign for trustee at Evergreen School District? So, so I, 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 I'm a president in Evergreen. I ran for trustee where I live, which is in San Jose Unified. I mean, fundamentally, what I said was, I want to use my experience as a teacher working with kids and bring that to the school board because it's an important perspective that needs to be talked about and needs to have a seat at the table. And uh, is there an issue of charters in your district? Well, there are, there are charters throughout the Bay Area. Santa Jose Unified has some charters. Uh, they, they do, we, I say they, I'm, I'm not, I haven't been sworn in yet. That happens December 13th. But, um, so I'm still learning of all that. They have a portfolio of charter schools along with the regular public education. My concern is continued expansion of charters in the current situation doesn't make sense. And the, the billionaires who are funding these charters, it seems like they want to decide what schools get money. Well, there's that privatization issue that, that I'm very concerned about because I worry that what happens in some of the corporate uh, charter schools is they use CMOs, charter management organizations, and they pull a percentage of the money that follows the kids off to the organization. And in some cases, it's essentially a land grab that they end up with property paid for by tax dollars and it's, it's the, the ch charter school law in California was written in 1992, I believe. It's well past time for a rewrite, and I'm looking forward to our new governor and the legislature working on updating the charter school law because it's becoming the Wild West. And the developers want this land. Some of the developers are non-union, so they're building these schools on you. Well, in, in general, obviously, union to the core. I mean, my mom was a teacher, my wife's a teacher, our youngest daughter's a teacher, and, and I know that there is a power to advocate for kids and ourselves in collective action. And, and the worry about the, most of these charters is that they're non-union and that they're essentially at-will employees. How can you advocate for your kids if you're afraid you might lose your job if you open your mouth and say what you know is right for those kids. And it's a two-tier education system? It, is that what's happening? It's, it's beginning to feel like that's what's happening because, yeah, and it's just, it, there's, there's a real concern. And so, again, I wanted to have a seat at the table where I could, because I, I was limited what I could do as a classroom teacher. I'm limited in what I can do as a union president. And I feel like I want to take the next step and now as a trustee so that I can have honest conversations about what's happening and what's best for kids. And the other issue is pensions. A lot of these, uh, your CalSTRS pension plan, the charters are not paying into the pension plan. Are you concerned about the underfunding of the pension plan or cost shifting? You're having to pay more and more into your pension? Well, I mean, that's an issue. That's an issue for districts as well. They're, they're paying more than they used to teach. I'm paying more towards that pension. Um, CalSTRS is still functioning, but you know, going forward, there is a worry because there are groups that, that charter schools that aren't paying into that, and I believe they should be because that's what's best for everybody. They're 401ks, they're putting the teachers in 401ks. Yeah, which, which is at the whim of the stock market, and the only buddy that's, the only person that's guaranteed to win in a 401k is the, is the person that's turning that stock over, the stockbroker. Right. Do you think there's more solidarity growing in the labor movement in California? I feel like there is. I was there when uh, Local 19 in San Jose settled their contract. I watched them count the vote and I thought it was a great lesson for San Jose, for Silicon Valley, about what concerted action can do. And this is amazing. It's scary that it's day 56, but it's amazing what these people are doing because they're doing the same thing, showing what you can do with a grassroots uh, labor movement. And it's, I'm just thrilled to be here. California has a $13 billion surplus. You think that should be going to education or housing? Yeah, now 13, I haven't heard. I, I, I 
I, I've struggled with uh, Governor Brown, liked what he did in a lot of things, concerned about, I feel like the surplus that he's built up has been on the backs of, of public education kids, so I worry about that. Um, it'll be interesting as we move to a new governorship and, and the legislature reconvenes, and I'm hoping, obviously there's a lot of need, but I'm hoping that we can look at how California is funding its public schools because we're the fifth largest economy in the world, and yet, depending on which metric you use, we're either 46th or fo whopping 41st in per pupil funding, and that's just not acceptable. Are co-locations an issue for your district? Co not, not where I work. Um, in Evergreen, not it's it potentially becoming an issue in San Jose, but I don't want to speak to that yet because I still haven't gotten my feet all the way in. It's an issue in districts in the east side, absolutely. There's one school in the east side Union School District that I believe has five schools on it, independent high school, and it's being balkanized. It's crazy. It sounds like complete disruption of the education problem. Well, and you wonder, you know, everybody wants the gym, and, and kids should have a right to that gym. How can that possibly function in a way that's good for kids, any of the kids? So you're fighting not just for education, you're fighting for the, the workers and the students on the picket line. Absolutely, because it's all the same system. Somebody asked me, how can you be a union president and be a trustee? It's the same thing. Students are the center of everything I do. When I was in the classroom, that was the case. When I was a union president, that's the case. It's going to continue to be as I'm a trustee. I'm enrolled last week. And the first day, they move up just a little bit. But then the second day, they don't even show up. They sent an email to the president of the union to say, what do you guys want? Wages? Or health care? Uh -huh. And we said, no. We want both. That's the reason we fight. We are not that kind of person to get little by little. That's not a right for everybody. So, so that was the choice they wanted you to make? Yeah. Wages or health care? That's yeah. your choice. They, yeah. Your choice. For the first time, we, yeah, we never do that. And we are not going to accept. And by the way, this Saturday, Sunday, we're going to have negotiation. Let's see. I hope they have something. And are other unions supporting you? Other workers support you? We, we do have a lot of support. God, right now, there is a lot of, a lot of people from different organizations, locals. And we do, yeah. We feel like right now we got more power than before. Am I right? So you've changed. You built power. Yeah. And we and we hear about the guesses. There is a lot of complaints. And what we what we tell the guesses, please, can you send a letter to these guys or let's see. So we got to support. Yeah. Race is only ten dollars. I mean, 10 cents, they're different about the last contract. This is what they put on the table last week. That is nothing different. And we are not going to change. We are not going to change. We are not going to... Uh, we, don't need, we don't need to choose. No. We need both. We need the wages and we need the health benefits. We will not be, we will not be going inside until we, we get what we deserve. We need the wages and we need the health benefits. My name is Carmen Garcia. I am working for this hotel, Mario Marquis. I have 13 years here working in house, housekeeping department. You're out here, it's been a long strike. Yes, uh, we have uh, 56 days already. And have you ever been on strike before? No, this is my first time. And trust me, I never think we want to be on a strike because we're working for a huge company. But unfortunately, we had to uh, be on a strike because the company doesn't want to pay our benefits. We fight for our benefits, for uh, a fair rate, and also for security job. And for a uh, green choice that is carrying hour for us. Uh, for many uh, housekeeping, uh, the green choice when the guests choose. So that means we're gonna work like uh, two days or three days per week. It's not enough. That's why here say one job is not enough because of that also. 
the salary and our benefits. We had to keep security job and everything that we have before. How do you survive in San Francisco in the Bay Area with the cost of housing, just the expense to survive? Right now we cannot survive. That's why we are on a strike. Because in me, in my case, I have two kids. I cannot pay $500 per, per uh, insurance uh, for benefit, right? And pay rent. Imagine Green Choice got the hour for us. How, how come I'm going to pay my bills with two or three days working per week? I have to look for another job because we, we need to be live dignity and fair way and keep our benefits. And how has this strike changed you? How have you been changed as a result of this strike? Change a lot, yeah. I mean, because you're, you're, it's not hard to be fight, but we have to fight for our right. We have to fight to make it. Otherwise, if this company is small, you know, it's different. But this is a huge company. They have uh, the bigger company in the world. They are, they can pay, but they don't want to. It's not fair because we're working hard. We always try to do our best, and we fight for we. We like our job. We love our job and be working, but we need to fight for this. We are in this this problem, this side, because they they force us, to be honest. They pushed you out. They push us to be out and be on a strike. Because we are part of the union. We need to keep that union for security job and for benefit and you know to live. And, and it's been a long strike. Are you getting stronger? Yes. We are still stronger because God is helping us and I know and everybody here know we're gonna make it. Because we're gonna we are together and we are union, brother and sister. And you know we're gonna put make put we are put all our hearts the best we can do, we're gonna do because I know and everybody know we're gonna make it. We're gonna win. And we have also the support from the city.